Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is best known for helping create one of the most popular shows in HBO's history, Entourage. Writer, producer, director, Doug Ellen is here. Doug, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. You're responsible for one of the memories, really, that I will never forget in my entire life. My dog, who recently passed away, which is really sad. Sorry. You put her in her first movie. Do you remember this at all? I do remember. You do? <laughs> yeah, it was I do. Like... I have a cra I'm crazy with dogs. Uh, yeah. It's a very strange thing, but. I mean, it was very memorable to me, and it happened in the crazy. It's like one of those LA stories, right? So I was having my dog's birthday party in LA on Rodeo, as people do, yeah. and I was taking her down the street, and you, I didn't realize it was you or the movie. You were there, and you were shooting, and I was just trying to cross the street, and you, who I didn't know was you, came up to me and said, Are you part of this? Would you like to be? And I said, only if my dog can right. be in this movie. And you said, okay. And then um, we were also in the trailer. So thank you. You're welcome. And, <laughs> and to your dog, I'm sorry for the loss. No, oh, thank uh, you. Is that something that you did though? Like when you were shooting Entourage, you would just like pick people out on the street and be like, come the, in the scene. All the time. And I want really? this to feel like it wasn't uh, me picking out an attractive woman. I see the dog, you know, I have you a story. You saw my dog and you're like, I, I have to have her. I saw, <laughs> I had a story from school. I, I ran into someone that I hadn't seen in about eight years yeah. and I saw him and I saw the dog and I was like, oh my God, Brandy. And he was like, I can't believe you remember my dog's name. I had no Aww. idea his name. So I yeah. remember I remember the dog stuff, but yeah, we did it all the time. Michael Phelps was walking down the street once and we're like, Michael, you want to come in? <laughs> and um, it's kind of how we always did. Everything was kind of improv, really just throw it together as quickly as possible. Yeah, so, that's exactly yeah. how that day went. And yeah. it was pretty cool. So thank you for putting my dog. She's immortalized in Entourage. Yes. I'm very proud of her. Um, so Entourage was your real big break, but it almost didn't happen. Mm. And when it was first pitched to you, you said it was the worst idea that you'd ever heard. I, I don't know if those exact words, but they were <laughs> close. I mean, uh, Steve Levinson, who was my friend from college and, and my manager, um, he just threw it out there, this idea. And, and that was kind of my reaction. And Steve, the way we used to work together, he said, you'll figure it out. And um, I just thought, I, I don't really live that kind of entourage lifestyle. So oh. um, a guy with a crew and guys who like live off of him and live with him wasn't really my thing. but. We so th just there. because you hadn't lived that yourself, you thought it was a crazy idea. I just didn't think people would want to watch people live off each other. And it was good that I thought that way because it made me kind of dig deep into how this could be a family, you know, and oh. how these guys could each have a purpose rather than most of the entourages okay. we know are kind of hangers on. So this was, yes. gave guys real purposes. Turtle drove, you know, so there were <laughs> things that, that they uh, yeah, did. You know? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. evolved the story exactly. a bit. Exactly. Okay. A little bit. So you agree to write the pilot and then you show it to HBO. Their response, not exactly what you hoped. What did they say? Well, I remember when Steve called me and, and said um, they hated it. And I said, what exactly did they hate about it? He said, everything. <laughs> I was like, everything? everything. Yeah, and I remember, speaking of dogs, I had my old German Shepherd. I remember walking to the park that day, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done with this town. That's it. I'm going back to law school. And I have no idea why. I, I got in my car, I drove to Palm Springs, and I wrote a completely new script in like two days. That was after probably a year and a half of development. I wrote a, a completely new script, not a syllable was the same, handed it in and we were moving. And they liked it. They liked it. I don't know if they loved it, but they liked it. How did you change it? Um, it really, it was a tonal thing. I changed everything about, made it more fun, made it okay. more aspirational. Okay, so the first and one was like a depressing thing about a bunch of dudes hanging out together? It was, it, was, <laughs> it was a little like angrier, tougher. It was more uh, guys and, you know, more of Mark Wahlberg's kind of tough guy. Oh, uh, okay, type okay. Of thing, so. All yeah. right, so this was something maybe that would appeal to more women, probably. Maybe. I yeah. don't know. I don't know what anyone was going for. I just know okay. I, I went to Palm Springs in the middle of the summer. I think it was August. It was about uh -huh. 100. 15 degrees every day, I took a hotel and I just wrote something completely different. I always feel like that's gotta be the hardest thing as a writer, right? When you yeah. work on something for so long, you have this concept, you've worked out all of the storyboards and then they come back and say they hate it and then you have to keep working on yeah, it. It's, it's a wild thing. I mean, I, I did, for that pilot, I probably did 20 different drafts of it. Oh my gosh. So you really- Is that yeah, normal? Well, not not that many, really, because, I mean, there's, like, WGA rules, but back then it was, like, HBO. <laughs> they were the only game in town. I'm like, I'll keep going until you guys tell me to leave. So I, yeah. I, was, I was willing to do that. But um, it's, you know, you have to not take it personally. And, right. You know, you have to understand that they're looking for things they want, and you're looking for things you want, and eventually, you know, hopefully you come together. But So the show gets going. You guys start getting a lot of athlete cameos. Yeah. Tom Brady was on. LeBron was on. You got Mike Tyson. How'd you guys do that? 
You know what? They started coming to us, which was the incredible thing. You Tom know? Brady called you and said, I'm hey, can I be an entourage? I'm not going to say Tom Brady called me because I, I, I definitely called Tom okay, Brady. Okay, you called him on that one. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, but LeBron, they called us and told me he wanted to be on the show. I'm like, well, he's on the show. Of course we'll have yeah. him on the show. You know, Steve Nash's girlfriend wanted to give it to him as a as a birthday present, as I remember. That's and I'm cool. Like, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. So these things started happening. I mean, I never really thought about why we're going to have so many athletes, but I'm a big sports fan. And uh -huh. when my heroes like want to be on the show, you know, of course. Well, I don't know, be around a bunch of hot girls and like this Hollywood <laughs> setting. It kind and of good looking guys and, and good looking guys yeah. as well. That kind of fits. Yeah. Did you have to like when an athlete said they wanted to be on the show, were you like, OK, now I got to write something for them. Did the athlete weigh in on what he wanted to do? You know what? There were times, but they were always easy, and, and fortunately, they usually liked what I wrote. So, so we had great groups. I mean, Gronk came to me when, you know, he showed up on the set um, with Julian Edelman, which is like, yes. you know, these guys show up on the set, and yes. my friend, I forget who brought him, but he's like, they want to be in, they'll do whatever you want. And, and Gronk, I, Russell Wilson. You're like, well. <laughs> Russell Wilson's a friend of mine. I remember Russell was looking at Gronk, and I was looking at Gronk like, I can't believe how big he is. And Russell's like, I need one of, I need one of him, you know. <laughs> and. Um, I went up to Gronk and I was like a little nervous because I didn't know what I could ask him to do. And he uh -huh. had just been injured the year before. Sure. So it's like, you know, and I went up to him and he said to me, which is so cool. And it's kind of what the whole wish fulfillment of the show was. But he said, you know, when I was in high school, I told my friends I was going to be on Entourage and I'll do whatever you want. And it was just like it was a very cool thing. And he was a very Julian also. They were just such great like regular guys. They hung out on set all day. Wow. I remember Gronk was like serving soup to extras and stuff and just like. Were really, the extras ladies? They were both. Oh. They were both, they were both really like good, respectful Gentlemen. Guys. They were gentlemen. Okay. And honestly, you know, a lot of people have that, that rap about entourage. Now the guys were gentlemen too. I mean, they talked okay. a little bit, but they were always nice to women. Okay. Was there any athlete that really exceeded your expectations, maybe aside from Gronk? Um, well, Brady was amazing, and you know. What did he I, do on the show? I forgot. Well, they did it. We, he on was the in the movie, movie too, right, but he was also he was also in the show. They played golf together with, with Mark. Yes. But I remember when when Tom showed up. It was like seven o'clock in the morning, which normally you don't ask stars to show up that early. But he was so easygoing and direct emails, no agents, nothing. And it was with Tom. With Tom and directly it was like, emailing Tom. I, you know, I'll gonna... take his email as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> so it was like forty degrees out, and we were on a golf course. And he walks out of the car, no practice. This wasn't for the show. This yeah. was just like a thing. No practice. Gets out, grabs a club, hits one 275 yards. I swear to God, he misses a hole in one by about two feet. Wow. So he's and a good golfer. He's a good athlete. Huh. Yeah, so. Is it true that Eli Manning asked to be on the show mm -hmm. and then no-showed? Yeah. That's how we ended up with, with Tom Brady on the show, which was a good <sighs> replacement and um, always be a, a sad thing for me. I was such a diehard Giants fan. My phone rang. After the Super Bowl, it's Eli calling me directly. There's no agents telling me he'd like to be on the show. And I said, you're on the show. And I wrote a script. And then I sent it to him. I never heard back. I called him. I never heard back. And then long story short, I kind of like was freaking out. I'm like, how am I going to replace him? We're about to shoot now. I was three weeks away. Get a better quarterback. You know what happened was? Uh -huh. You know what happened was? Mark was at the office, which is not normal that he's there. And I'm, I was a little crazy throwing things against the wall. I'm like, I don't know what we're doing, but we have nothing to shoot. And he's like, how about Tom Brady and I do it? I'm like, well, that'll work. So, yeah, that'll work. You know, so are you we'll slightly work. a Patriots fan now? I, I do root for them if the Giants Look at that. are not winning. You know what? The thing is, is like now when you get these guys who, who deliver for you and show up for you, yeah. you start to root for them. Russell Wilson, if the Seahawks are playing, I root for them. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.